Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries from a somewhat unusual distant exoplanet, where for the first time ever, researchers were able to observe the entire atmosphere in three dimensions, allowing scientists to discover what's actually hiding here, and helping them finally understand what seems to be happening around this planet. And because this is a somewhat groundbreaking discovery when it comes to astronomical observations, mostly because this is the first time ever such an observation has been conducted, we obviously have to talk about this in more detail and discuss exactly what the science has discovered and how this was achieved. But to start, let's talk about the planet first and the star system where it's located. And while by itself this is not a new discovery, this planet and the star system was officially described approximately 10 years ago, mostly because this was just another discovery of what's known as a hot Jupiter. This star system is known as WASP-121, with the planet now referred to as Tylos. It's one of those planets that eventually acquired a proper name. And Tylos, or WASP-121b, is an extremely hot gas giant orbiting super close to the star. Here, a single orbit takes just 30 hours, with the temperature on this planet being in thousands of degrees. But even though this is 900 light years away from us, since this planet is so close to the star, and since it passes in front of a star every 30 hours, it essentially makes it a perfect target to study planetary atmospheres. And back in the days, or basically 10 years ago, its discovery presented us with a perfect opportunity to try to find out what elements these planets seem to contain in the atmosphere, and if they were in any way similar to Jupiter and Saturn. Short answer, uh, not really because almost right away researchers discovered a lot of unusual stuff here. Now first of all there were signs of really powerful winds, but also chemical elements that we didn't really expect at first. And specifically, heavy metals. Elements like iron and titanium were discovered almost right away. But because these observations at first were not very advanced, there was actually a bit of an argument in regards to what sort of metals this planet seemed to contain, and what exactly was being discovered. And so for practically a decade, there was basically a kind of a back and forth in trying to identify the exact elements. But one thing was certain, this was the first exoplanet discovered to contain water. Not like liquid water, but hot water vapor. This was most likely in the planetary stratosphere. And because this planet was a little bit more massive and a little bit larger than Jupiter, specifically 1.16 masses of Jupiter and 1.75 times its size, here it allowed us to see pretty much everything very clearly, but also presented scientists with a perfect opportunity to compare this to gas giants in the solar system. And the obvious first difference was the temperature, 2500 Celsius, 4500 Fahrenheit. This wasn't just a hot Jupiter, it was a super hot Jupiter, with some of the first observations of stratosphere revealing things like chromium, vanadium, magnesium, calcium, and of course iron and nickel. But also surprisingly, ionized sodium atoms. And here these unusual sodium detections were somewhat similar to what we kind of find around Jupiter when we see a torus created by Io orbiting Jupiter as Io loses a lot of sodium as a result of volcanism, with some of the previous studies suggesting that something similar was happening here as well. The sodium here was possibly forming some kind of a gas torus, possibly created by some kind of an exomoon with Io-like emissions, but that exomoon was never officially confirmed although we did talk about this in one of the previous videos in the description. But the additional observations using chemical analysis confirmed that the atmosphere seems to be a little bit out of balance as in it's actually escaping. And this was most likely because the planet was so close to the star and it was also significantly larger than Jupiter, which suggested that it was very likely in what's known as the Roche lobe of the parent star. Or in other words, the atmosphere of this planet was overflowing as the result of gravitational interaction between the planet and the star. And it was very likely the elements from this atmospheric loss that were being constantly detected by various observations. Likewise, surprisingly, this planet was discovered to be very likely blue in color. Which actually suggested one really important thing. This was a direct indication of weather patterns. In other words, just like Jupiter and just like Saturn, there were definitely different storms and different atmospheric activity that researchers now were hoping to confirm. But intriguingly, some of the more recent studies from 2022 and 2023 actually had somewhat mixed results when it came to titanium. Some studies were detecting titanium, some studies were not seeing anything, and some studies were seeing titanium oxide instead, with something similar detected by other studies, especially when it comes to these heavier metals. And so something really intriguing was going on here, and that something was now discovered by these three-dimensional observations. Because now, for the first time ever, scientists were able to use four different instruments from the same telescope 
Here we're talking about the Very Large Telescope, using the Espresso instrument, part of the European Southern Observatory, to essentially confirm that this planet had multiple layers, and it was really the different layers that we kept seeing previously. And so this unusual planet, Tylos, seems to be even more extreme than previously believed. And so in order to discover all of this, researchers conducted an observation of a transit with each of the telescopes focusing on a slightly different wavelength. And then by combining four separate observations into one single image, they essentially created a three-dimensional representation of this planet's upper atmosphere, which revealed something like this. We have hydrogen on top, sodium in the middle, iron on the bottom. And so here the observations revealed three separate layers with three separate wind speeds, all containing different elements. And this was basically visible as very different elements with slightly different speeds. And since the top layer is hydrogen, it does suggest that this is a gas giant not so different from Jupiter and Saturn. But the layers underneath are very different. Here they discovered two additional speeds of two additional layers, with the middle layer containing that sodium, so basically there seems to be no moon here after all, the sodium seems to be coming from the planet and from its upper atmosphere, and we have iron underneath. This was basically the deepest of the layers. But more importantly, they also finally revealed that titanium once again, which basically suggests that a lot of these metals, a lot of these heavier elements, seem to represent some of these deepest levels, and seem to be visible sometimes, but not all of the time. Which explains why they're sometimes invisible. Moreover, they also discovered a very bizarre jet stream that seems to spin the material around the equator of this planet, moving at super fast velocities. Here they refer to this as a equatorial super rotational jet stream. And what makes this jet stream so unusual is the speed. It seems to increase from about 14 km per second in the morning section up to about 27 km per second in the evening section. Now, because this planet is tidally locked, it basically always faces the same way toward the star, so the morning section here is always in the same region. But as this jet stream travels between the morning and the evening, it seems to increase in speeds so much that by the time it reaches the opposite side of the planet, things move at almost 30 km per second. That's way faster than anything we've seen on any planet. Implying that the atmospheric conditions on this planet are really, really extreme. I mean, this jet seems to gain approximately 14 km per second in speed as it travels from one side to the other. And that's just completely bizarre and difficult to explain. And this also seems to produce a lot of violent churning in the upper regions of this planet, which very likely results in this planet losing a lot of atmosphere. But everything here seems to be the result of the proximity to the star. Because of the super hot temperatures on one side and slightly colder temperatures on the other side, we basically get these ridiculous speeds between the hotter and the colder sides. But what was surprising here is that it also seems to have layers, with researchers even comparing this to an onion. Not because it makes you cry, which I'm sure you would if you actually lived here, but really because it has these unusual elemental layers with various elements moving at different speeds and visible at different altitudes, with titanium and some of the heavier elements present and detected in the much lower levels. So essentially a lot of these heavier elements seem to be hidden by the upper atmosphere. But essentially this is the first time ever we've seen anything like this anywhere. This is the most unusual and the most unexpected observation of any planet outside of the solar system. The strange three-dimensional structure of a very hot Jupiter with layers of atmosphere moving at different speeds and an extremely fast-moving jet right at the equator. But because this is just the first such observation and because now we have the technique to detect this from other planets, the next step would be to observe other planets just to see if there's anything different there or if this is actually some kind of a unique feature to a lot of these hot Jupiters. And so I'm actually excited to find out what they discover in some of the future studies, because for all we know, maybe this is how we can now define hot Jupiters. They're essentially kind of like hot onion planets. They contain different layers with different elements. Or at least this one is. Hopefully in the next few months we'll find out what the other planets are like from very similar observations. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.